Guys, how are you, my brother? <laughs> Great, guys. I'm super good, my man. How about you, buddy? I'm awesome, my man. I'm so excited to get into some of the awesome stuff that we discussed with uh, Sean Fuchs last week. Hey? Yeah, definitely. Last week, I had such a good conversation with uh, Sean Fuchs, who is an old school teacher of mine, also a mentor, and a guy who's lived a very interesting, diverse, and profound life. And uh, we got we had an opportunity to discuss a, a new book that he's just written, and uh, we, we took away a hell of a lot from that chat. And, um, you know, I guess one of the, the big things that he spoke about, uh, which is a chapter in his book, is around uh, a big event that happened in 2005, which was the London bombings. And I think... Um, the world goes through so many big events, hey Craig, and, and right now we're obviously going through a massive world event. Um, we're living through it. It's basically unfolding in front of us, uh, in our eye, you know, in front of our eyes. And one day we will have great stories to tell. And I think, you know, sometimes it's really difficult to kind of imagine how you're ever going to get out of these moments when you're kind of stuck in them, you know. But they, but but we do, we do. We all, we always have, we always do. And like. You know, if you look back throughout our lives, we've been through a fair few, you know, just ones that kind of popped up uh, was the, the London bombings in 2005, 9-11, the Madrid bombings, uh, we had the Paris terrorist attacks, um, then, and there's been so many other big ones. Um, and right now, like in the midst and the middle of this coronavirus, we don't think about those things. But it's important to remember that those things have happened and that we came out the other side and we survived. And um, there's kind of like, you know, it's, it's a good reminder for us to kind of just remember that life will eventually get back to normal. Hey, Craig. Yeah, so true, Gareth. And, you know, the thing that the, the sort of parallel there is that we go through these events in our own lives personally as well that are like huge and they rock your boat and the exact same thing does happen as Fuchs spoke about through a tragic story that he tells is that life does go on in the moment. Sometimes you think literally it's not possible. It's not going to happen, but it really does. And we can look back on things in our own lives and you can see that that's true. Um, even if you may have some hurts or things that linger, life is going on right now, right now where you're sitting, you know, your life is moving forward and you can be present and be with it. And I think that's, um, that's part of the lesson right now is, you know, uh, you know, when we sit down and we take a moment to take stock of where we genuinely right now are, you, you sometimes realize that it's, that it's okay right now. You know, there's obviously people in situations that we struggle to kind of comprehend, of course. Um, but even those people will come through that time uh, and life does slowly but surely kind of come back to normal, as you said. And um, what we're finding, and, and Gareth and I have discussed this a lot, you know, is that people are kind of finding themselves in a bit of a reactive panic mode around everything. And it's crazy because whenever you, or whenever one responds with panic or just knee-jerk reactions, whether it's in a conversation or whether it's uh, uh, at work or something that's happening around you or world event, generally speaking, very little good comes from that kind of response. And sometimes it's a good idea just to kind of double down on slow, forcing yourself just to slow that down, just yourself down just a little bit so that you can really assess the situation, decide, okay, are we going to go to this new normal that everyone's saying it's totally wholesale changes or is it going to be quite similar in a lot of ways to the old normal? And I think what people are not realizing, I think, and you know, that's just my opinion is that actually it will go a lot back to the way it was. Humans are creatures of habit. Humans are creatures of uh, sort of patterning. And uh, I think as soon as the things sort of go back to normal ish, it will be more similar than you might think to the old way. And I think by slowing down, being present and patient, you can actually uh, find ways of realistically changing your business, for example, rather than just wholesale changes. Because when it goes back to normal, suddenly you go, oh, wow, I've uh, made 
it wholesale changes in my business and now it doesn't actually it's not congruent with back to the way it was so yeah it's crazy yeah yeah for sure craig and i think that's super well said you know and um it is it is difficult in this moment to kind of like uh know how to do things going forward but like you said like we must be conscious that this is a moment where we are probably responding in a panic state and um, if we can just kind of like try to remove ourselves a little bit from that then then that'll allow us to have a kind of better reaction and kind of to see things a little bit more more clearly um and and just talking about going back to like normal and stuff we're already kind of seeing this happen you know you're obviously in australia and you know, I'm looking at pictures of my friends and videos of my friends like in Sydney and, you know, everyone's almost practically back to normal, like, you know, having their little brunches and lunches and these sort of things and everyone's on the beach. Um, mm-hmm. There was there was pictures of the beach in the Netherlands this weekend, absolutely ramo in America on <laughs> Memorial Day, like everyone just kind of back to normal. And I think that's what people desire. That's what they crave. That is mm. in our flipping DNA. That's what we want as humans. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and um, you know, we, we mustn't like, uh, we mustn't think that it's not going to be like that, you know, because, um, you know, we're all wishing for it to be, be pretty much like that. And, and, and hopefully it, it does get there and, and we must try and try and push for that, I think. Um, Actually, just a funny story that happened this week to me where that made me realize that it's going back to normal. For the first time, I think it was on Thursday, um, someone shook my hand. Like it was kind of a reaction. <laughs> so I hadn't shaken anyone's hand for weeks. <laughs> it was so funny. And he put his hand out and I just went bang and I shook his hand and it felt so good. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then both of us were like, oh, that was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> and I was like, well, that's the first one. And then after that, I've had one or two other people at work that have wanted to shake my hand, you know, and I think, which is really telling because literally no one shook hands for a few weeks. So anyway, I just thought that was, it was a weird feeling to, and it felt kind of good just to have that contact, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that's one one of the really cool things in this situation that we can rely on humans is that we we have really short memories. So maybe we will forget about it really quickly, you know, and like giving man hugs and shaking hands and stuff will be back pretty soon. <laughs> I'm not so, sure about the birthday cakes though, but <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, classic. But so the good news is that life does evolve and is obviously constantly changing, you know, and like after corona there's going to be something else to worry about in the future. That is for sure. You know, we even have to look, if we look back to the start of this year where you were in Australia, you had the fires, the fires were devastating. We thought, how is Australia going to overcome this? Mm. You did. Those are now forgotten. Now you have Corona to worry about. Corona will be forgotten. Then you have something else to worry about. So we will get out of it. That's for sure. Um, And let's, let's sort of remember that and and stick together and, and, you know, um, be as positive and upbeat about it as possible. Um, Mm. And talking about like progress in the conversation that we had with Sean, uh, one of the things that, that he spoke about, well, first of all, Sean is a gay man and, um, you know, he, he sort of came out at a time, you know, in the eighties or or nineties when, you know, it was almost still kind of like a taboo kind of weird thing to be, you know, like not really talked about a hell of a lot. Um, And he spoke about uh, some of his friends, a, a gay couple, that are that were born in the 30s like 35 or 36 or something and they're obviously now in the 80s and um he was he was saying that when when they used to live together they basically they lived in the same house but their house was on a corner and they effectively had two different addresses um and they, they had to do that because they also worked together and they didn't want people to know that they were in the same house because they were gay. And it's like, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, Sean also spoke about having to lie on a questionnaire in the army when he was in the army because he wanted to have a role of leadership. But one of the questions was, have you been in a gay relationship? And he knew that if he had ticked that box, he would not have been able to be in a role of leadership and he didn't he decided not to tick it and he was accepted and he became a great leader in the army and obviously in the rest of his life so um, but isn't that Garrett isn't that like ridiculous though hey like just because you know no one would have known people looked up to him all these people that would have felt uh, violated by having a gay guy as their leader they didn't know any different and it's just a really telling thing that like it doesn't matter people like 
Don't worry about people's personal lives. As long as they show up and do what they there to do, he proved that point, didn't he? Absolutely, Craig. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's, it's about the person, not like about what they are, what they like, or these sort of things. Yes. Um, such a good reminder. But then, you know, the cool thing is, and the good, this is, this is the, the lesson, I think, is that things do evolve. Things are better now than they have been. You know, if you look at the world now compared to then, um, same-sex marriage is a thing. Like this is, you know, it's not like, it's not sort of, okay, this is weird. This is what happens. It's in the law. Like, and you know, so, so the evolution of just that one example is, is amazing. And we must, we must be proud of these things um, mm. and remember that, that things do get better in, in the world. Um, and it's really interesting actually uh, to kind of think about the circle of life, isn't it, Craig? Like life always evolves and our role our roles in life change over time too, don't they? <laughs> totally, Gareth. And I think the way we relate to ourselves, the way we relate to others, uh, and uh, it's just fascinating to, I'm sure we can all think of examples where the mentor becomes the mentee and the teacher becomes the student, uh, the parent becomes the child. You know, these things happen in society all the time. And uh it's important to be aware of our flux, you know, this, everything is in flux in our lives and things do change. And there's times in our lives where we feel like we are going to be stuck in X, Y, Z position. And that does change just like we were, we were sort of talking about at the beginning of this chat. Um, but one of the interesting things that, that, you know, Sean spoke about, and I think it's, it's quite satisfying in some ways to talk about is that if you are in a situation where you've been bullied and you've had a, really tough time from someone bullied I, I, I sometimes feel it's got a connotation that uh might you might think it's more serious but bullying can be someone that's always giving you a hard time at work or you know there's lots of there's a sort of a spectrum of bullying but anyway you can find a position where you've been bullied by someone and especially when you're younger it's really tough because you feel like that's your position now that's how there's this hierarchy the, the bully has made it clear and then you sort of become in, submissive into that place. And the, the, the thing to remember is that that also, just like other things in life, it switches and changes and, and the circle of life comes around. And, you know, the interesting thing about bullies, and I think just with relationships and communication in general, is that they can be really hurting. They could have a lot going on. And if we can remember, not always easy, but if we can remember in these moments when someone's in this, you know, maybe bullying us a little bit, is to, to think, what is their self-esteem like? Why are they needing to do this? And there's another layer there that we don't always realize. And what often happens, and this is a thing that we've all seen, I'm sure, is that that person, especially in a younger, when you're younger, and you come back and you meet these people in the future again, and you realize that they were kind of sad people and they weren't okay actually and sometimes they end up in a position where they they haven't really made it in life and they haven't been pushing forward and moving forward with their lives because they've been stuck on these things that have held them back whatever they may be these blockages in their lives and that's why they were bullying in the first place and if they don't deal with them they become that person where maybe you know the the um the manager or the thing uh, the, like the leadership role and they're like your subordinates and it can be this crazy role reversal. And it's the nerd sometimes in class that no one, you know, really gave the time of day to that ends up being this person who's like thriving in life and, and just moving, moving things forward in their life. And the big brute of a bully is now like, you know, just this random dude that's never really gone in there anywhere. And um, it's just, it's, it's, you can see this in different ways. You can see, okay, cool cycle of life. But also remember, if you're in that situation, don't worry, keep going. It's going to change. It'll be okay. And you can, um, you will see how that can, that role can change. Um, not that you necessarily want the role to fully change. You just want to be equal with people at the end of the day, you know? Um, and uh, I think that's really, really important. Hey, Gareth. 
Yeah, for sure, Craig. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting if you look at your own life and you, and you go back to say your school days and stuff. And, and I, I can picture, I can even say the guy's names if I wanted to, I'd be like, <laughs> these guys were the massive bullies. Now when I check them, like say on Facebook totally. or whatever, I'm like, Oh, what? I, that's weird that that's how you kind of ended up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and you know, they were like the manna, the, the real big boys at school that you wouldn't <laughs> mess with. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and yeah, even like you said, there's some, some like in inverted commas, of course, the nerds, we just say nerds cause we're jealous. They were so smart in class. <laughs> like they're the guys that are flipping killing it, like and leading in, in the corporate world and doing really, really well. So I think it's really, really important. You know, a really important lesson that, uh, we, we must always respect people, always treat people with respect, you know, and uh, with the respect that they deserve, basically, because you never know in life, like when you might come in contact with them again, and when you might need them on your side. And it's just a good reminder to to try and just try and be nice to people. And, um, and because there will be a time when when you do meet them again, even though you don't think, think about it in that moment. Um, and another thing which uh you know with which Sean touched on and and he's like i said he's been a, a fantastic leader um to so many people in his life in in so many different instances and he really has learned like the what the essence is of being a good leader and the great skills and um you know i think we're in a time now in the world where we really need good leaders to kind of stand up you know we we need some strong people uh that are going to carry us through this moment and that doesn't mean it has to be like the, the prime minister of a country or anything like that that could just be you know you with your buddies for example um or your your you might be the manager of a team you know in a company or whatever or have a business like you are the leader on there's so many different layers of leadership so um, we all have an opportunity to kind of get get out of this on the other side, um, and the skills that Sean mentioned uh, from his perspective that that contribute to great leadership are uh, basically inspiring people, uh, creating opportunities for people so that they can grow, and also consulting people, mm -hmm. and that means chatting to people understanding their side of the story, meeting them in the middle. And it's so important, hey, Craig, especially in this day and age, we see it all the time when people are not listening to each other, hey? Oh, so true, Gareth. And, you know, not least of all the politicians, you know, we just, when are we going to be consulted about certain things properly, you know? And we've just seen um, these big changes being made, big egos getting in the way of, of positive change, and I think when we can learn to tune or tone down that ego and be okay with accepting that we're in a really strange time, not everyone has the answers, but so people are going to be wrong. You know, we're going to make mistakes because it's, it's just so complicated at the moment. And I think if people can just go, you know what, I, I was wrong on that front one week or two weeks or three weeks ago, things have changed in Corona time. Things change really fast. And we're like, cool. But I think what's happening is people are not willing to just accept like they got it wrong. And then because of that, not, not consulting others and being okay with that uh, vulnerability of making a mistake, then that's when the trouble starts with, for people where they forced to do things that don't really make sense anymore, which made sense maybe three weeks ago, but not now. And uh, yeah, so I think co consultation is huge. And we, we, you know, we really feel that if everyone just, took a moment to f stick to those leadership uh, attributes in our families, right? In our businesses uh, and then of, in a bigger picture as governments and things. I think we do in a different place. You know, if we really took those things, maybe add in a bit of vulnerability and, and uh, humbleness, uh, I think we'd go a long way. And so I think the moral of this today's chat, over, the overarching theme is to take time to reflect um, and think about how you can inspire others. I mean, I think we generally don't always realize that we can inspire people around us, you know, just your own family, start there, as you said, you know, start really small. And what is inspiration? Inspiration is by leading by example, you know, you're not 
you know, flying off the handle when something happens. Your kids see that. Other people see that, you know. And Sean has this calmness and this assertiveness that this air about him that he considers what's being said and not reacting. And I think that's a great place to start for inspiration because you yourself was, were, were inspired by that, Gareth, when you, when you saw that, that attribute within him, not because he told you, but because you saw him doing it. He was being, you know, he was being that person. He was embodying what he, what he taught and teaches. And um, I think that's really what it comes down to. So let's try and be together on this one. And, uh, and and try and just be more like Sean Fox, eh? Yeah, for sure, Craig. And, and all of those things that you said about like good leadership and whatever, there, there's one thing that also um, that, that also makes it stick together, basically. And that's the consistency of doing those things. Because with consistency mm. of doing them, it makes you trustworthy and it makes you reliable. And that's why people want to be around you. That's why they want to listen mm. to you. You know, not er- if you're erratic, it doesn't work. Um, so, so that's a, yeah, that's, I think one of the things that, that sticks that all that stuff together. So once again, Craig, thanks so much. Awesome chatting with you, buddy. Um, and I hope that, uh, yeah, I just hope that you have an awesome week and that things are sort of easing up even more there in Australia, uh, from, from the lockdown and stuff. And then in terms of next week, we have an awesome guy on the podcast, don't we? We do, Gareth. We've got uh, Christopher Maher on, and he is just this incredible human being. He's just tapped in and tuned in to life and to people and to energy. And he is an ex Navy SEAL and a, a really strong athlete. And he's now used some of these lessons in his life to become an absolute master healer. And uh, so you can't miss this one. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all then. All of you, we're wishing you an incredible week. You too, Gareth. Thanks again for everything. And we will chat to you all soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Waking at dawn, packing the gear.